to welcome everybody back to the Independent Investor here. The broadcast studio is full of a couple guests here, uh, subject matter experts on Eduro Clean Technology with some late breaking news here in the last week. They've got some amazing things going on. We have Yazan and Mariusz Skonicki here as special guests tonight on the show. We are going to have a, a, a back and forth dialogue on progress, where the company has been, and more importantly, potentially where this thing is going. We're going to hit on a lot of topics. You guys are going to want to stick around uh, for this Q&A on Aduro Clean Technology. Yazan, welcome to the studio. Please kick us off here. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. I, I think uh, you you said it great. I mean, honestly, it's been uh, after two years plus of being involved in Aduro, this is a, a moment of pride as an investor to come on, uh, come on and talk about Aduro because they finally um, have a significant name attached to them that for the last two years have been, you know, among the very few that have been, you know, pro this name, supporting them, you know, whether it's financing, open market buying, so on, telling my network uh, about the story. By background, I represent the family office um, in Vancouver. Um, we invest in companies that are, uh, you know, I, I was called at the cusp or at an inflection point, um, you know, and, and came came across Adoro uh, about two two plus years ago in the midst of the pandemic. And um, I'm not going to mention the name. If it comes across, then we'll we'll talk about it. But it came after uh, a month of uh, another company got pitched to us, and we were very skeptical. Um, following that name. So I, I had the, the pleasure of meeting Ofer and Abe uh, here in Vancouver. And they flew in the midst of the pandemic um, and nothing beats, you know, a face-to-face. -face. And uh, we went through the entire thing and, you know, they, they, were, um, they were very genuine and they, they started going through the opportunity and the like, but I won't bore you with the details. After that, you know, we went through the, you know, uh, we went through the, the NDA process and, and then got to know the technology and understood the technology and why it's a breakthrough. And then from there on, it was, uh, they converted someone that, you know, was very skeptical that there is a way to kind of resolve this waste plastic as well as other verticals that we'll talk about in this, um, in this interview, hopefully. Absolutely. Thank you. I, I do want to kick it over to Mariusz, please, and let him uh, introduce himself. But uh, um, you, you mentioned skepticism around this. Um, I was skeptical. Uh, in 2022, the entire U.S. market and Canada is skeptical. And dare I say, the entire world is skeptical right now. And why, why is this any different? Why shouldn't we be skeptical uh, in a name like this? I'll kick it over to Mariusz. Talk, talking about skeptical, I was uh, screaming and crying for three weeks not to talk to me about this idea. And you see, I was introduced to this idea because I was I shared an investment idea with another person, with another friend who uh, who knows Yazan. And and, you know, he kept telling me, hey, look at this Aduro, look at this Aduro. And I'm like, stop talking to me about Aduro. Like. The, the, this, I'm not interested. This this company has has no revenues, and it, it just looked to me like every other company out there at, on this, you know, uh, Canadian stock exchange or microcap space. It's like all of, you see. If you look to these companies, all of them have groundbreaking technologies. They're disrupting everything. They're going to change the world. And most of the time, what happens is, is that they disrupt your wallet. Okay, they don't deliver anything. <laughs> they, they're very good at disrupting your wallet. So, like, I was screaming for so long, like, no, no, no. But what happened was that Yazan and I, uh, well, I needed help uh, understanding a different industry. And so my friend said, well, Yazan, he understands this in different industry and can help you understanding the industry. So I was like, okay. So we connected. We talked about this different industry. And, and uh, you know, and Yazan was helpful. He was knowledgeable. So that's how I realized, well, this guy is not some dummy. He he understands 
in this other industry. So I know I'm not talking to somebody, you know, I'm not talking to an amateur. But then that was it. You know, he helped me. I, I did my investment. And from time to time, he just sent me a text about a duro. Not nothing pushy or anything. But, you know, just, hey, look at this. And I was just yeah. like, you know, rolling my eyes. It's like, no, I'm not going to look at this. But then one Sunday, I like took some time and I looked at it and I looked at it more and I looked at it more. And I'm like, holy crap. Like, if this thing, if they truly have the solution for what they're saying, I mean, this thing is going to be massive. And then the next thing I know is I, I start putting all these hours into it. Then I go to freaking Canada. I get, you know, uh, searched by, you know, any Canadian officers. They sniff everything around my car before entering, letting me enter Canada. And and here I am, like, you know, talking about Aduro. And, and I would say... You know, I have two investment ideas that compete for the first place. And, you know, and I don't know which one is the be better. Like, I, I love them both. And Arduro is right there. So that was my my journey. Not don't talk to me about it. I don't want to hear about it. Now I'm talking to you about it. Fantastic. Thanks, Mariusz. Um, I'm going to kick it over to Yazan. I, <clears throat> he's going to speak a little bit more about the excitement surrounding this space. Um, the world needs this solution, uh, to be blunt. And when I looked at this opportunity... Um, I was excited right away. Um, there was obviously that initial skepticism, but when I did my due diligence, I was sold. Uh, and I just, for the grander viewing audience, want everybody to understand that you are talking to three share owners in the company. And I want to encourage each and every person out there to do their own due diligence, but I also don't want you to pass up on the opportunity to look at this space in general. And Yazan's going to take it over and talk about some of the investments in the space, uh, some of the maybe potential competition, if there is any, uh, in the space and why this renewed focus, if not this initial focus on this space, is catching fire as of right now. Is on. Great. Thank you so much. So, lo look, I mean, it's, um, uh, I was talking to a very important uh, investment boutique in the U.S. Uh, yesterday and um, we crossed notes about the Duro and, you know, following the, the shell game changer, no pun intended, everyone's saying, you know, that's a game changer for the company and so on. And then I told them, like, you know, based on your desk right now with what's happening with inflation, with, with the like, um, you know, what are you seeing? And they, they told me, look, I mean, this is one of the very uh, few isolated spaces that we're seeing, we're able to raise money for we're able to get green bonds for, and we're able to get uh, interest from investors in. And I said, you know, what's the driver? Like, again, the skepticism side. So they said, well, following the passage in August of the, uh, the Inflation Reduction Act, part of that component, the component there says, talks about accelerating the case for investing in circular economy. And I bet you, prior to you looking at the Duro, you would have not looked at what circular economy is. So That's in right. short, it basically means that, you know, you start from any form of plastic. So this, you know, this type of plastic, you want you want to return it back to an after cracker, which is basically, you know, again, to uh, a plastic form. Right now, today, um, and you gave the example of, you know, uh, like uh, chocolate in the wrapper. Um, same thing with these, you know, like right now, 80, I would say more than 80, I mean, 95% of plastics do not get recycled. We put them in a separate bin, they go through the process, but the issue of contamination means that they're not circular. And what happens is they wind up in landfills, they wind up in uh, in oceans. So. The the uh, the Inflation Reduction Act said no. We're going to support these industries because we need to um, you know help improve the circular economy. So now you're having tax credits, you're having you know bonds at the discount, you're having uh, a lot of interest, and suddenly you have you know even um, the the thermal the approaches are getting money despite the fact that. You know, again, they're they're using the same heavy amount of heat and so on. So that was one 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 thing in the investment uh, realm. Uh, Marius and yourself talked about the 2025 pact, and I cannot undermine how significant this pact is. 
Okay, under this pact, basically, whether it's the US, Canada, Europe, uh, Australia, there's kind of different iterations of the percentiles that they want to have as recycled plastics. But the bare minimum is any new plastic, any new expansion plastics production, they want to have 25% of that fully recycled. And today, I guarantee you, there are no solutions that results in 25% plus recycled plastic. So the, the third is looking at some of the examples, you know, despite how tough this market has been. So, um, you know, the two examples that come to mind are uh, KBR's investment in Mura technologies. Mura is, a, I would say, a thermal approach plus. So in other words, you know, they, they do have they use water, um, but uh, they still that water requires a, a different amount of pressure. And I'm not gonna be I'm not the chemist in the room, but I'm gonna say that their approach requires significant amount of energy relative to that of a duro. They still require a central unit. And what you see in them is that they're saying that you know this KB like KBR is a huge company like when you take go go to the ticker a huge private equity and you know they went and dropped 100 million bucks in june to own another eight percent of mira so that's you know putting valuation of 1.5 billion dollars we know pure cycle which is a uh publicly traded company that was a SPAC, you know, they do mechanical recycling, which is again, you know, their sugar daddy or their company that's behind them is Procter & Gamble. And Procter & Gamble wants to show again that they're going to have a circularity. So what they're going to do is they use, you know, they, they put money behind this company. That's a $1.3, $1.4 billion right now. And they don't have a commercial unit up and running. Um, and most recently, and I shared it with you guys offline, was Samsara. Samsara is a is an enzyme um, based, I would say, startup because you know they they don't have a you know a third party validation or you know the the steps that a duro or you know some someone like that would say, and they've raised thirty five million US dollars or the equivalent. It's forty fifty four million AUD at rough in Series A, which they don't put the like an exact value, but anywhere right. between one seventy five to to 350 million US dollars. So there's ample amount of money in this space. And this is something that is contrary to a lot of the other spaces where you know, a lot of spaces are struggling to find money. So that, that's, uh, that's what I wanted to talk about here. All of them are struggling. <laughs> it's, it's hard to find a bright spot in this market. Yeah, um, I, I get a little yeah. more a lot more opportunistic, actually. I think for the majority, it's the same habitual cycle of, you know, everybody focusing on how bad things are. The worse it gets, the more excited I get to actually purchase and buy. And, and make no mistake, for our viewing audience, there will be opportunities that um, come out of this market. And uh, at $40 million market cap, some may be sitting there. They may be skeptical. They may be being introduced to Aduro Clean Technologies for the first time this evening. Why does it matter? And I want to kick it over to Mary Yush because Mary Yush has provided more content to YouTube than any creator out there on this topic. And I want to thank him now for doing that. I'm going to also link his videos uh, in the description. I probably throw them in the comments so they're more accept uh, accessible to our viewing audience. And I would encourage you to go kick, hit that content because it is absolutely fantastic. But I do want to get uh, Mary Yush here and get his opinion because he can maybe stock, talk about the sentiment right now and maybe how Aduro is kind of kind of that shining light that she talked about, Yazan, in the market. Mary Yush? Yeah. So, I mean, if you are a student of Warren Buffett or any of the grades, you know this is like a playground for them. Yeah. You know, I mean, everybody loves to talk about uh, be greedy when others are fearful and be fearful when others are greedy and they're just doing always the opposite because it's so difficult it's so difficult to buy when ev when every everywhere you turn to youtube channels and they'll, they're going to tell you how bad the recession is going to be you know how i mean any youtuber you go to financial youtuber you go to i mean just look at the thumbnails 
yeah and you like you, you wanna you wanna commit suicide just after looking at the thumbnails it's like yeah. why, why would i be buying but you see what happens when the thumbnails are wonderful what happens when everybody agrees with you well it it usually doesn't turn out that way because they they send you into worth of cr crypto or companies that you know are overvalued and and here we are sitting in a situation where nobody wants to buy anything everybody is afraid to touch anything uh and they just want to tell you how bad it is and to me it's like okay if everybody thinks it's so bad what's my competition like I have no competition for these stocks, right? If, if I want to go and buy a house, do, do I want to be the only buyer at the table or do I want to have 80 people competing with me, right? It, it, it's obvious, they understand this, but in stocks, they want to buy a house, they want thousands of people to agree with them and they want to get a cheap price. Well, you, you, you're delusional if you think that's going to happen. So you have this chance here uh, where we're sitting that, you know, everybody is so afraid. And here's a company that if you look at the chart, we're almost at all times highs. Like, yeah. like we're almost at all time highs on this company. And it's it's mostly because it's been undiscovered. They, they've been going under the radar for 10 years. They came out, you know, public a couple years ago or whatever, but they still were like not talking about anything that their website wasn't even working. And here they are coming out at this time when the market is so horrible, yeah. they have no exposure. I mean, the exposure yeah. is just starting. They just got a contract with Shell. And because you know what? The world is gonna, the, the, just because we're in a recession, doesn't mean we don't need to recycle things. Just because interest rates are going up, doesn't mean Shell doesn't need to recycle things. 2025 is coming up. So so you have this entrance, entrance point that's, that's, uh, that's probably favorable. And then, so what about the upside? Well, in one of the most recent videos, I, uh, I did a calculation just, you know, yep. uh, I looked at Shell, how, how much Shell wants to uh, recycle and they want to recycle 1 million tons of plastic per year. And if they, they are the ones that are going to choose Aduro, and we don't know for sure, but if they do, right. that would equate to almost a revenue level of 200 million dollars from one client and then that kind of revenue is a licensing revenue licensing revenue is the best kind of revenue you can have okay. because because you don't need to you don't need to build a plant you don't need to hire people i mean those things have to be done the plant has to be built but somebody else is paying the bill so for you you're just getting a check in the mail and so this kind of revenue is a very high margin revenue and very high quality revenue. So that that 200 million re uh, you know, revenue level, that will translate to, I don't know, 150, 175 million of bottom line. So now you tell me, what is that kind of bottom line worth? I would say a minimum of $3 billion. Yeah, that's from it's a one mid client. From yeah, one it, client, one client puts it in the mid cap category. Yeah, yeah. they're sporting yeah. margins at fifty percent, which is incredible. <laughs> and I, I want to get Yazan's take on this as well, because I know this is huge when we're talking about the size of the opportunity. And people are going to come back and they're going to beat you up, Mariush, and they're going to say, "Well, the stock nosedived at the end of the market today. I've got to stay away." All right, I need some validation. <laughs> people buy houses when the market's really, really good. And they buy stocks when the market's really, really good. You see the problem in that? And I hope people are really reading between the lines and what we're trying to communicate with the opportunity. Nobody's going to put a bow on this opportunity for you. And nobody's going to talk about it through YouTube the way that we're breaking it down for you. So I hope you're getting some value out of this. But I want to defer to Yazan and get his take on this. Yazan. Sure. And, and look, I mean, the, the you know, uh, Mary is kind of hit, hit it on the nail there when when he talked about the uh, the shell and 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 the the size of their opportunity and you know the caveat is we know that the R two pilot which is by the end of the year is going to be up and running uh, they need to go through the semi commercial uh, pilot which is next year and then the commercial pilot or the commercial unit is twenty twenty five that being said with now shell you know behind them 
um, the timeline could could get uh, closer. Now, that being said, two years is not a significant time. You know, yes, it sounds like a significant time. Yes, you know, to twenty twenty, they they put in their deck twenty twenty seven. You know, where they had a right. hundred million bucks right. in revenue, but the reality is that that's kind of been rolled or came closer. Um, how closer? We don't know. We, you know, it would be kind of a speculative exercise. But let's put that aside and take it even further. Okay, Marish mentioned something yesterday, and I really liked in that video. He talks about the size of it, right? The size of the opportunity, and the size of the opportunity here is every year we're producing 380 million tons of waste plastic, 80% plus no one else has a solution for, okay? So, you know, I'm not going to tell people that, look, guys, we need, you know, like as Mary said, they can, if they're processing a million in three, four years, whatever, uh, the five years, you know, that's a $3 billion, $4 billion company. You know, you don't need a rocket scientist to do the math. It's just like simple math. Now, what I want to talk about is when you talk about 380 million tons, and some people have mentioned this to me before. They're, they're like, oh, you've got the pure cycles. You've got the Mura. No, Mura wants in few years to be processing a million tons. And why? Because they need central, you know, units. So basically they have to have like 100,000 plus uh, per tons in order for it to be slightly viable with the support of uh, the KBRs and the DAOs and the like. This is the uh, the only one I know, at least, the only one where the partner is actually making profit. For the vast majority of the other com competitors, call them, or comparables, because they use some form of a thermal heavy heavy heat, they're they they are forced to be basically a subsidy based business, so someone has to subsidize that, and that's why only developed countries will be their clients. Only countries like or only companies in right. developed world. I'm not I'm not kind of dissing that opportunity. It's massive, but it's such a huge market. Three eighty million, three hundred and eighty million guys. Like you know, all the combined companies based on what they're saying. They can't even process five to seven percent of, of of the waste plastic that's out there on top of what's existing. And, so and you know, it, and you know, just, you know what you're saying. What you're saying. Another thing is that uh, it's not like this is an opportunity where you have an existing player that services certain clients, and you have another company that comes up with a better solution and is trying to come in and convince everybody else, hey, we have a better solution and trying to steal market share. Awesome. We are in a position where nobody, nobody can solve this problem. 80% of plastic cannot be recycled. So the, the field is wide open. Uh, the government is making mandates that they have to come up with solutions in 2025. The, the players want to come up with solutions because not only will they make hopefully make money with it if they choose a duro but also if you're a plastic producer and you can say to the world hey look buy our uh, bar yeah. snick snicker or buy our coca-cola and believe me our stuff is truly 100 percent recycled that's that's like a, a marketing marketing uh promotion for them to be able to say that to the customers so it's it yeah, that, that's all I just wanted to, to say. That's incredible. Yeah. I, I, I know Yazan wanted to talk about some other aspects because we, we get caught up on this plastic skew. Uh, Aduro has two other skews that unfortunately have kind of taken a back burner, but Yazan wants to shed a little bit of light uh, on the HPU vertical as well. So we'll bring him on to talk a little bit about that. Uh, I'll talk about it, but let, let me just uh, please like wrap up the last conversation. You know, it's one thing, and I've learned that back in school, Economics 101. Okay, look, as much as these companies want the marketing, and I agree, in the developed world, they will do it for the marketing side. 
But in the developing world, okay, where Aduro has, um, you know, a country manager and they have a team in Mexico, they have a team in, uh, you know, let's call, uh, they, they have a Netherlands team as well. Um, Aduro, like, let's take Mexico, okay? No one will touch that place. You know why? Because right now there's no um, subsidy for, you know, the waste plastic that's all over the map in Mexico City. Um, and, and these guys really want a solution. They want, so you have a solution that is profitable. You will have people that will want to work with you. And, th- and that's the, the simple math of it. So outside of, you know, subsidized entities, this is something that's very important. Um, but, but that's on the plastic side. So, and I appreciate you talking about the HPU. I, I want to say, Today, equally as pollutant or emission creating, um, you know, the heavy oil industry is, whether it's Canada, California, Latin America, you name the country, okay? They all require some form well, uh, or a material that allows for this heavy oil to basically move in a pipeline. It's called a diluent. And again, not the chemist here, but I'm going to say that you mix it with heavy oil in a mixer and allows you to kind of move or push that heavy oil to the other side. Now, believe it, (laughs) because that was the first kind of strike for me, is that diluent is about 25% of the barrel coming from uh, the oil sand in Canada down to the U.S., and what happens is the following. This is insanity. Like you want to hear some crazy stuff. This diluent actually is produced in somewhere in New Mexico in the U.S. Moves up via train to Canada. Imagine the emissions. Then in Canada, we mix it. And Canada is the largest exporter of oil to the U.S. Get mixed. And then goes back in a pipeline. And because of, you know, I'm not going to go and say liberal, non, non-liberal, non but because of our sure. current government, um, the issue is that, you know, uh, they, they don't want to issue, they don't want to have another pipeline. So what does that mean? It means that, you know, currently 25% of the capacity of uh, oil production of Canada, which is five plus million barrels a day, that gets moved, 25% of that is diluent that gets moved up and down, okay? And like imagine the amount of emissions that you have there. Now, let's talk dollars. That diluent, okay, it's, there are 750,000 barrels of diluent that you need every day that goes to Canada. 750,000, roughly right now, I know it's a related pricing, but it's about $15 US per barrel. So the Aduro's HBU vertical is, it's based on the idea that you're, they're able to, and it's third party validated, so it's not like me saying, um, it's based on the idea that you can turn that heavy oil into a lighter one. And what that would mean is once they have this R2 up and running on the HBU side, you know, think of it this way, as, a, as an oil producer, I'm going to be able to take this heavy oil in Canada. I don't have to add as much diluent. Let's say that they can cut diluent use for half. Let's not say it's it's all gone, but let's say half. Sure. That's about $7 US of savings per barrel. And it frees up 12.5% of, of your pipeline. So there's like... so. I don't know, seven times 750, that's what, five, six million dollars a day, you know? Um, so that that's only Canada. And, and again, like I mentioned, the same problem is in Latin America, the same problem is in, uh, and now with what's happening now between, you know, countries, um, we need the extra barrels. And, you know, what's happened is Venezuela and Colombia and so on are, you know, they, they're, these countries are suddenly having lifts in their embargoes that were before. What that means is now they have to find a way to move their uh, heavy oil up to the U.S. So the, these dynamics are all working in favor of Aduro, and we don't talk about this vertical as much. So 
by the end of this year, again, they're going to have a pilot for that. And by Q1, um, you know, they're hoping that they can invite people like us to come and see it in live in motion, um, as well as, you know, business development. So it's another vertical that is massive. It's a, it's a multi-billion dollar vertical on its own. Yeah, so during my due diligence on Adoro Clean Technology, uh, it, 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 I don't want to overstate the opportunity. Um, I, I've done away with that. I've done away with that many, many years ago, but I'm doing stock market investing my entire life. And I also don't want to underscore the fact that when I looked at Adoro, I think it was the best opportunity that I've seen in two decades. So the viewing audience can take it for what they will. Um, that's just the truth of the matter. Um, and all three verticals actually got me excited. The plastic one being the one that was kind of the most dear and near and dear to my heart. I used to work on the ocean. I've seen the landfills. I'm, I'm in environmental protection for my job. So it just hit home with me. And for a lot of investors out there, they may not invest in an Altria because they're against smoking. I don't think there's an investor out there that can't look at a little bit bigger of a picture here and understand what Aduro is looking to solve on the big picture and get behind it. You don't have to buy the stock, but you can absolutely pay attention to the story that is developing right now. And it is developing very, very quickly with these initiatives. I do want to close it down a little bit, but I do want to at least allow you guys a chance for the last word. I want to bring Mary Yushan here because his coverage on the company has been spot on. It's been fantastic. We all owe him a debt of gratitude for taking his time and paying forward this story. We do it because we want to, uh, not because we have to. Um, this is an easy company to share because it is very, very exciting. And we could probably talk for three hours uh, about everything that's going on. I know we just touched on the Game Changer program. I will try to link in the description all of the articles that we have used. But we have mentioned small tidbits of what you can also find um, holistically um, on Aduro's website. Uh, I will also place a link to that as well. And I would encourage you guys, if you spend 10, 10 or 15 minutes, it will be well worth your time in understanding how excited we are uh, about this initiative as well. So I'm going to bring Mary Yushan for a closing word, anything we've missed on the Aduro Clean Technology story. Mary Yushan. I, I always tell people, look, don't, don't buy this stock. Just, yeah. I always tell them, don't buy the stock. Just, just look at it. Take the take the time to look at it, see if it fits your uh, uh, your, your investment philosophy. Uh, but here's here's what I will say. I had an investment idea that kind of reminds me of this. In 2017 and then 2020, I was screaming. I was screaming. Look at it. Look at it. Look at it. Look at it. People didn't want to look at it. They looked at it after it went up five x. Okay. Then they looked at it, and and now so so it went from like twenty cents to three dollars. They didn't buy it at twenty cents. They didn't buy it at forty cents. They didn't buy it at sixty cents. They bought it at two dollars, and then it went to three. They felt a little bit fantastic. Better. Now it's at a dollar. Now they're screaming at me. Now they're screaming at me that I'm an idiot that I pump pump and dump stocks. And I'm like, look, where were you when it was at twenty cents? Where were you when it was a four cents when I was talking about it? So why don't you take out the mirror and look at yourself and see, hey, I was the fault. So it kind of reminds me a little bit because now I'm telling people, don't be stupid. Look at Aduro. I'm not saying you should buy it. Look at it. Don't be lazy. And then decide. But don't wait for it to double, triple, quadruple or 10x. And then you're going to buy it. And then, and then it has a pullback and you're going to scream at me. No, look at it now. And then if, if it fits your investment criteria, if the company delivers, you will be happy. But don't wait for it to 5x for you to look at it. So that's my message to everybody. Fantastic. Thank you, Mariusz. I appreciate the time. And keep up on the content, please. I know we're going to be following this closely story uh, over the next 12 months. Stand by for rolls because we are in for a roller coaster ride. It's going to be fun to sit back and just uh, be a student of this and, and really be a fan of Aduro. Uh, in conjunction with Shell and, and bringing this solution to, to bear sooner than later. I'm going to turn it over to Yazan as well for the final word. I appreciate it. And, and for, first of all, I really appreciate you having me on. Um, Mary, she's spot on. I, I'll never tell anyone to buy it or sell or do whatever you want to. But what I'm going to say is, look, I've you know spent two years to get to the level of conviction that I'm at. And... Um, you know, I can't tell you how you know how much I 
think this this can be, but I'm going to say a lock. There are a few things I'm going to wrap up with. Uh, first of all, to get a $200 billion company like Shell to endorse a technology um, is very, very difficult. Okay? It's, it's, it's like a, it's not even, you know, the, the realm or the possibility of it is very uh, difficult. To get them to endorse it and and go out and allow you to use your their name is like one in a million. I know that because of all the other companies and they're very, very difficult to kind of allow you to use uh, their name. So especially because they know what the tap what happens. Now they know. And the the third aspect is, you know, they are not exclusive, which is another thing that people may have some questions about. They're not the exclusive partner. Imagine this. They didn't hook them and say, you're only going to have to work with Shell. Okay, th- those are like things that I, I don't know that happen often. So again, I think the valuation is, this is a mispriced opportunity. People, you know, have not un- understood. I gave examples of other, you know, I think earlier companies that, that are, like in the 200 million plus, I gave examples of other, you know, approaches that are in the billion plus. Um, you know, at, at the end of the day, it's a 40 million US and it, it's, it's, it's just mispriced. It's undervalued by every metric that you look. And all the others, again, they're, tr- you know, trying to address one component and they have not been able to kind of crack the code. This one has so many verticals that I think what, what you know, what, if I was them at one point, I'm going to say, you know what, I've got, you know, the rubber tires and I've got the, uh, you know, the renewables and I've got this and so on. You know what, I'm going to start licensing, out license some of these, you know, to by jurisdiction because at one point, <laughs> that's what's going to happen. And there's going to be so much opportunity for this. So it's like a, Uh, It's like an octopus that has so many (laughs) legs and, you know, so really, really excited about what will happen in the next, you know, 12, 24 months. I'm not in it for, you know, as I said, I'm already two years in it. I I, I look forward to the uh, next, you know, months and and so. Um, And, you know, the caveat is going to always be, you know, market contingent, uh, you know, if, if the market, uh, has a melt up that's a complete different story. They need to continue execution, one hundred percent. But as of as of right now, at forty million US dollars, this is then mispriced. Fantastic. Uh, thank you so much, Yazan. I want to close it out with that. But before I do, on behalf of my audience, I want to thank Mariushka Nitschkia and Yazan for making their uh, time available to us, guys. This is the power of social media. Okay. Um, I know myself and Mary Yush and those few content creators that um, are a little bit edgy. Um, we're, we're trying to get your attention and we're trying to educate. We're trying to give you an insight on what it takes to, to make it. Okay. There's a separation between a company and a stock. Uh, never, ever misconstrue those two things. I talk about this all the time on my channel. But if you can get to an opportunity like this, at least from a monitoring perspective, put it on your radar, because as of two weeks ago, I had no idea that this opportunity existed. Uh, And I dare to suggest that I was not the only one to think that all plastics, that when it gets put in the recycling bin, gets uh, out and recycled and processed to be introduced back into to, to service. It is absolutely the opposite. Um, Yazan talked about 80% of our plastics going unrecyclable in our landfills and in our oceans. The time is right now in 2022 to take a look at this. Take a second look. Follow the channels. Follow Mariusz's channel. Uh, watch the content that he's so graciously put onto YouTube. And we are going to be intimately following this story going forward. So on behalf of the channel, thank you, Mariusz. Thary, thank you, Yazan. We will be closely monitoring this story. Thank you very much, guys. Have a great one and good luck in your investment future. <laughs>